Okay, so let's talk about graph coloring. And you know, it's, it's a pro problem, a task that we like to solve on graphs that even a three-year-old could understand. And I'm gonna present it to you in two very different contexts. Okay, so, um, you know, imagine that you have a bunch of radio stations, R1, uh, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, and I'm going to show you now, you know, what's the radius, what's their reach, okay? So they all have, they each have different reaches, okay? So, you know, R3, so this is R1's reach, okay? This is R3's reach, this is R2's reach, okay? And then um, uh, R5 has a certain reach, okay? R4 has a certain reach, okay? And then R6, as I said in reach. Okay. And you know what's interesting about you know so the radio stations broadcast at a particular frequency, that's their you know their frequency band. And let's let's consider you know a reader, a, a listener, for example, in this in this region. Okay, so a, a listener in this region can 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 hear both R1 and R3. And so, you know, if they both broadcast at the same frequency, this reader will this listener will will hear garbage. And similarly, the re a listener in this region here, this uh, um, region, that's the intersection of the three regions of reach. So this listener can hear R1, R2, and R3. Okay. And so these, that means that, uh, you know, if, if any one of them is broadcasting at the same, at the same frequency, um, you know, then that, that listener will hear garbage. And, you know, same thing here. So this is a region of intersection, a region of intersection. Basically, where two regions intersect, the corresponding radio stations must be using different frequencies. Okay. Um, and so the question is, you know, what's the smallest number of frequencies we need in order for all the radio stations to be able to broadcast to all the listeners? And we, we, we could easily just assign each radio station its own frequency, but then that's using up a lot of the, the bandwidth that's available and the FCC, you know, auctions bandwidth for a very high price. So you don't want to use that many frequencies if you don't have to. Okay. Totally different problem. So you have, you know, you have Alice, Bob, Charlie, David, Erin, Fiona, and Gavin, okay? So they are all taking courses, okay? And uh, we have courses uh, C1, CS1, C2, C Calc1, C3, Psych, C4, you know, CS2, C5, Calc2, and C6, Fox. So they're taking courses, okay? All a bunch of different courses. They can buy a bunch of different people. So this is a bipartite graph. We saw this in matching. Okay, and I'm going to tell you who's taking what courses by providing the links from the people to the courses. So Alice is taking course one and course two. Uh, Bob is taking course one and course three. Course one and course three. Uh, Charlie is taking course two and course three. Course two and course three. David is taking course two and course four. Course two and course four. Um, Aaron is taking uh, course four and course, course six, four and six. Uh, Fiona is taking five and six, five and six. And Gavin is taking three and uh, five, uh, three and five. Okay, so now what's going on here? What's going on here is that, um, you know, at the end of the semester, we have to assign final exams to the courses. And what we know for sure is that, you know, for example, course three and course five, which are both taken by Gavin, they cannot have the same final exam schedule. Okay, because if they do, then Gavin can, cannot take one of the finals. So any two courses, if they share a student, if they have the same student, cannot have the same final exam. So, you know, how do we how many how do we assign final exams, final exam times, and how many final exam times do we need to assign? And you know, we could certainly just assign a different final exam time to each course, and then we have, we'll need six final exam times. But imagine, you know, at a school, a reasonably large school, where you have something like 500 courses, you can't just assign 500 three-hour slots. We'll be taking exams till the end of the summer. Okay. So, uh, uh, what's the minimum, the minimum number of frequencies needed? Uh, what's the uh, minimum number of exam times. 
needed. Okay, now here we can, there we already started with a graph and we're going to massage it into a different graph. Here we, ha you know, we have just a bunch of regions uh, occupied by, uh, broadcast to by a bunch of radio stations. So, uh, the thing that comes to mind is, well, you know, when two regions overlap, that introduces a relationship between radio stations. Okay, so for example, R1 is related to R3. So let's draw a graph where we have R1, R2, the radio stations, R3, R4. R5, R6, okay. Now, this general kind of problem, so here we're trying to resolve the conflicts in between radio stations by giving them different frequencies. Here, we're trying to resolve the conflicts between courses by giving them different exam times, okay. And so, while these problems look very different, you know, they all, they both, the, the challenges that we face both involve resolving conflicts. And so what I'm about to do is a general approach to resolving conflicts. You construct a conflict graph. So who conflicts with who? So we have our radio stations. R1 conflicts with R3. R1 conflicts with R2. R2 conflicts with R3. Okay. Then R2 conflicts with R4. Okay. Um, R3 with R5. Okay, and R4 with R6, and R6 with R5. Okay, so that's the conflict graph. Interesting. Let's, let's see what the conflict graph here looks like. And we're going to do the conflict graph for courses, because they're the ones that potentially conflict. So we have, you know, courses C1, C2, C3. So we'll, we'll put them as C1, C2, C3, uh, C4, C5, C6. Okay, and now Alice introduces a conflict between C1 and C2. So C1 and C2 conflict. Uh, Bob B introduces a conflict between C1 and C3. So C1 and C3. C between C2 and C3. Okay, D between uh, C2 and C4. Ah. Okay, E between C4 and C6. Ah. Okay, F between C5 and C6. Ah. And G between C3 and C5. Ah. Oh, look, even though these are totally different problem settings and they came from different places, they have the same conflict graph. Okay, now how are we going to resolve conflict? We need to assign different radio stations to any two uh, radio frequencies to any two radio stations that conflict, i.e. that have an edge. We need to assign different exam times to any two courses that uh, conflict, i.e. that have an edge. Very similar problems. Okay, now let's formulate this in an abstract way. Let us represent by... Um, you know, let us represent by uh, radio frequencies. Let us represent radio frequencies with colors. Okay. So if I if I give this radio station the red frequency, then I cannot give the red frequency to either of those. Okay. So I can maybe give this radio station the green frequency. Okay. And now that I've given this green, since this has an edge to both of these guys, I cannot give red or green to this guy. So let me give this guy the blue frequency. Okay, now since I'm trying to minimize the number of radio station, number of radio frequencies, well, I can reuse my red frequency here. So I can reuse red here. Okay, that means I cannot use red here. Okay, and I cannot use green here. So I can reuse my blue here. Okay, and that means that if I'm, if I don't want to start a new frequency, I'm going to have to use green here. So I can get away with three frequencies and I cannot get away with fewer than three frequencies because all these guys interfere with each other and so they need three frequencies. Similar thing goes on here. If I, if I let the color not represent the radio frequency but the exam time. So the, this course gets the red exam time. This course gets the red exam time. Okay. Um, this course gets the blue exam time. This course gets the blue exam time. And this course gets the green exam time. And this course gets the green exam time. Then I see that with the, with just three exam times, I'm able to satisfy you know giving all the exams so that all students can take all the exams. Okay. Now what you'll see that both of these problems reduced to you know what explicitly I I solved as a coloring of a graph problem. That is all that graph coloring is. So simple. I give you a graph and I ask you, can you color the, the, the vertices, so graph coloring, can you color the vertices so that if two vertices are connected by an edge, so if two vertices are neighbors of each other, they must get different colors. So that's just a very abstract coloring problem. Can we do it? And if we can do it, then we can solve this problem and we can solve this problem.
Okay, so that's just graph coloring in general. Graph coloring. So let's talk about graph coloring. <laughs> Okay, so graph coloring. Graph coloring problem. And now we can formally specify it. I have just described it here. Given a graph, given a graph G, which consists of a vertex set, which is, you know, V1, V2, up to VK, and a, an edge set, which is a bunch of edges, E1, E2, up to EK, uh, e, uh, let's call it N vertices and M edges, okay, color the vertices. Now, of course, it's nice to have, you know, visual colors, but, you know, mathematically, we can, we can, we can label each color by a number. So red is one, uh, uh, blue is two, and green is three. So we can, we can just number the colors, okay. So define colors, colors, you know, one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, now color the vertices, color the vertices, that means assign a color to each vertex. So each vertex, vertex gets a color, let's call it C sub i for vertex, for vertex V sub i, and C sub i is, is a number, okay, and we'll assume that you, you know, you, you try to use the colors, the smallest uh, indexed colors. So you try to use the colors 1, 2, 3, up to K. Use colors 1, 2, 3, up to K, such that if two vertices share an edge, if two vertices, so such that for every edge, edge, so for every edge, the, the two vertices have different colors. So each edge is defined by two vertices and you want those two vertices to have different colors. And if you can do this with K colors, we say that you have a valid K coloring of the graph. If you can do this with K colors, then you have a valid K coloring of the graph G. Okay. So that's it. I mean, I've just put in sort of a more mathematical form the task that I showed you visually here. Color the vertices so that, you know, uh, for every edge, the two corresponding vertices of that edge have a different color. Okay. Now, in this small example, we did it, you know, we, we did it visually. So let, let's try to think of a, of, a, of a general algorithm that can solve this problem. Okay. And I'm going to call this algorithm the greedy algorithm. And I will show you the way it works.